by the system. It was not allowing me to join for the last 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> just a few too clever. Clever. But it's good you are here now. Uh, and so I think uh, just uh, for everyone who's been waiting patiently for us, we should just get the ball rolling uh, and maximize as much time as we can. Um, so let, we're talking today about the Victoria Full Stock Exchange. This discussion brought to you, uh, Tambarara, thank you so much for everyone once again who's joined us. Honorable Minister, uh, people have been asking uh, and certainly wondering why, what is the thinking behind the Victoria Full Stock Exchange? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, first of all, let me uh, thank everyone who's online and thank you for, for, for joining in on this discussion. Um, uh, you know, uh, there is need for the creation of, uh, uh, let me call it globally recognized stock exchanges in Africa. Those will arise from environments that are devoid of any negative impact of exchange rate uh, fluctuations. Those exchanges will arise from an environment which is freer in terms of the ability to, to do business, come in and out and so forth. So we, we, we need an environment like that. I would say Africa needs an environment like that. Now, now uh, uh, of course, we are not the, the largest economy in Africa, no, in Southern Africa, but a trading platform is exactly that. It will be as large as the investors who come onto it. So, so, uh, uh, so then uh, we as a government working with World Stock Exchange, we saw an opportunity for us to perhaps create that platform, that Pan-African, if not global platform for the trading of stocks uh, on the African continent. But also, we want to do it in a way that it is promotive of foreign investment into Zimbabwe and also into the region. So that's how the, the Victoria Falls uh, Stock Exchange idea came about. We said, let's create a stock exchange in an enclave, uh, a financial services sector enclave. We, we already have that enshrined in our legislations around the ZIDA uh, following uh, its takeover of the special economic zones uh, uh, activities. So let's make use of that. But also we can always uh, 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 you know, amend our exchange control uh, regulations to make sure that such an extent can, uh, an exchange can be accommodated. So, so we have all the legal uh, instrument, uh, legal boundaries and enabling environment to create such an exchange. So, so what will it do? So first of all, we want it to be a conduit for portfolio investment into Zimbabwe and for foreign direct investment into, into Zimbabwe. Uh, we want it to be a platform for trading uh, securities in Africa in hard currency. We also want it to be a platform for countries, companies that seek to go international to, to, to use the exchange as a conduit. As you know, uh, currently some companies come into the rest of Africa through uh, you know, um, uh, destinations such as uh, Dubai, such as uh, Mauritius, such as in other, in other uh, uh, jurisdictions and, and, and tax havens. Why not a Zimbabwe uh, uh, you know, a jurisdiction? Why not a Victoria Falls uh, a jurisdiction? Uh, the other reason is that we want, we would like our pension funds, we want to support them in their quest to, to have part of their portfolios invested in, uh, in, in, in foreign securities. So some of those foreign securities are securities that we could create ourselves as Zimbabwe on the Victoria Falls Stock Exchange. I'm currently pushing a bill through parliament that will allow pension funds to invest offshore. So part of that offshore uh, is Victoria Falls Stock Exchange listed uh, as securities. The other reason really is a mining sector one and selfishly a mining sector one. Zimbabwe is a strong mining country with is about every mineral that, that, that you can think of here, now including oil and gas. We, we, we have everything. We have even got uranium, rare earth. Uh, I won't even mention gold and the whole PGMs, uh, class coal, I don't know. We, the list is very long. We have every mineral. Uh, but we know that the mining sector is, in terms of investments, is a hard currency driven sector. The equipment, uh, all the, that needs to, to be done 
to, to be able to pull out the mineral requires hard US dollars, hard foreign currency. And these companies of us who would like to, 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 to receive a reward that is uh, uh, you know, protected, uh, that is guaranteed, they want to be very clear on the, the sustainable internal rate of return. And this can only be guaranteed by an environment that has got this kind of flexibility, that has got the hard currency uh, uh, clothing around it. And so the, the, the Victoria Falls Stock Exchange would offer that and really be a, 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 you know, a driver of investment into the a mining sector. Uh, I'm even seeing that, um, I also think that um, the, the insurance companies that offer insurance to the mining sector, at the moment, insurance for the sector is, is, a, is a foreign sourced because our own insurance companies can't really offer insurance products in US dollars in hard currency. But through this uh, window, they can register subsidiaries in the offshore financial center, not just around Victoria Stock, Falls Stock Exchange, but in the broader center, which will allow them to offer insurance products in US dollars and therefore provide insurance cover to the mining sector and other sectors that uh, desire such, 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 such insurance. You can see really that that is our thinking around creating a, a, this exchange. Um, I'll just stop here for now. Uh, I've given a few reasons as to why we think it's important to have such an exchange. I thank you. Well, fantastic. Thank you so much for that overview, uh, Honorable Minister. Um, let me also just mention that we have, as part of the panel, uh, three other members here, and uh, I will introduce them very quickly and hand over some questions to them. Uh, first is the Chief Executive Office of the Zimbabwe Stock Exchange, Justin Borni. Uh, thank you, sir. My first question will come to you, but let me introduce everyone else. We have from the Association of Investment Managers, the Chairman, Mr. Jibela Magutakuona, and we have the Head of Research for Sub-Saharan Africa at Renaissance Capital, Yvonne Mango. So uh, welcome to all those panelists. Uh, uh, Mr. Boni, if I could come to you very quickly. Um, we've understood, well, we've heard from the minister the overview, but I think people may also want to know what structure this Victoria Falls Stock Exchange will take. Um, will it be standalone? Will it fall under ZSE? Uh, how will that, uh, maybe you could come in first and then if the minister wants to chip in, he can also do so. Mr. Boni. Okay. Okay, so th thank you very much. So the way you have, we think about uh, the structure of the Victoria Falls Stock Exchange is in three phases. So the first phase is where uh, ZDC helps set it up. Uh, we did this because uh, ZDC has got the experience. Uh, we did it because it's almost uh, bootstrapping. Uh, that is the best way to do it in terms of low cost. Then the second phase is when we get an uh, equity uh, partner. Uh, we are looking for partners uh, either investment bank or another exchange, uh, preferably another exchange uh, that we invest into uh, VFX. Then the last phase is when uh, VFX becomes standalone. Uh, standalone, standalone exchange uh, with its own management and its own board of directors. So it's three phases. So the current phase is where ZSC is setting it up. Then the next phase is where we get an equity partner, uh, either investment bank or, or another exchange. Then the last phase is when standalone are running on its own. Yeah, uh, Thank you so much for that. Oh, yes, I, I, I agree with what Bonnie is saying. That is our intention. Okay, but, uh, and, and what role, if any, will government play in it? Oh, you know, government is the ultimate regulator. Number two, as you know, government is already a shareholder in the Zimbabwe Stock Exchange, as well as, by definition, VFX itself. So, so this is, uh, there's nothing that uh, the Stock Exchange or Security Commission does on VFX that they don't consult on. So we may be quiet in the background, but I pretty much know everything that's going on there. Mr. Bonnie, a, a quick comeback to you. Are you not concerned that the VFX will weaken the ZSC, will cannibalize it because you know, everyone will be attracted by those hard currency earnings? So I think it's, um, the aim really for VFX is largely on new listings. Uh, companies are not currently listed on ZSC. Uh, so we're talking about uh, startups or companies that are expanding, uh, in terms, especially mining ones. We are looking at mining houses that are listed elsewhere, uh, that are in Zimbabwe, that would like to come in, into our capital markets. So that is our main target. As far as companies on ZDC is concerned, uh, they are allowed to invest up to 20% of their capital, but there is a big catch, which is that it can't be the same type of shares with uh, on or what is on ZSC, but that is not our target market. Our target market is uh, new companies or companies that are listed elsewhere to come on our exchange. That is the target target market. 
So I think it's a completely different target. Great. Let me just bring in the other panelists. She's the head of research uh, for Sub-Saharan Africa at Renaissance Capital, uh, Yvonne Mango. Let me ask you this. Uh, obviously, uh, from what we've heard, it's tried to attract new listings, but is this idea not too late? I mean, can an offshore financial center work in a market like Zimbabwe, given where we've come from, what we've gone through, the perceptions that are associated with our country? Um, in brief, yes, there is potential in the, in the concept. I think that what I'll try and do is address uh, the concerns that investors currently have. And just to give some background uh, to the finance minister and thank him for this opportunity, um, I am of Renaissance Capital. We are an investment bank targeted towards uh, frontier markets and emerging markets. And our clients were institutional investors in, uh, primarily invest in these frontier markets, Zimbabwe being one of them. So we've got quite a few clients invested in Zimbabwe. However, the main concern has been the lack of ease in terms of repatriating capital and dividends, as well as, of course, significant changes in FX policy that have discouraged foreign investors. Uh, that, um, so some of the concerns that have come across to us from our investors is the lack of depth in the FX market. Uh, the stability and liquidity has been an issue. Uh, transparency, that like more clarity on how it functions, how FX allocations will be made, and more transparency on how the allocations are made to investors. We do realize that the, the intention here is this, um, that the Victoria Falls Stock Exchange will be uh, US dollar denominated, and the main question from um, uh, investors is, um, can the uh, authorities guarantee that um, once they invest their US dollars or foreign currency into uh, this exchange, that they will be able to repatriate, because that's been the main concern uh, for quite a few years now. So um, if I were to address one main point, it's the ease of which uh, investors can repatriate uh, capital and dividends and uh, how the Victoria Falls will differ from um, the current exchange we do have. Indeed, thank you so much. Uh, and I think very pertinent points there. Honorable Minister, maybe you'd want to respond to that very quickly. Yes, let me respond to that, but I'd like Bonnie to come in because him and I have discussed this at length that it, it, it makes sense initially to have our central bank, Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe, involved or more directly as, uh, in the segment process. So, so um, uh, that is being uh, uh, fine-tuned uh, and that will be the case. Uh, the reason being to deal with exactly what uh, uh, Yvonne has raised, which is the, we want guarantees that there be full conversion. And of course, there is commitment from government and a reserve bank that the foreign currency will be made available. Uh, that's why we want central bank to be involved initially. Uh, but over time, other banks with a strong balance sheet and the skills would also be involved. Uh, but Bonnie can add some. Okay, okay, thank, thank you, Minister. So this is one of the areas that we would put a lot of uh, work, uh, work on, uh, especially with the central bank. Uh, so shortly, uh, the central bank will be issuing out a directive uh, that will address a lot of these concerns, including how investment can be done uh, on the exchange, uh, especially from local investors. And uh, a lot of that will be very clear that it will be easy uh, for foreign investors to come in and it will be easy for foreign investors uh, to, to, to go out. So without disclosing much, because we are finalizing the discussion with the Reserve Bank, but what I can promise is that the Reserve Bank has been very forthcoming uh, they understand uh, this concern and the directive that will come will make it clear and, and I, I can promise that it will be easy for foreigners to come in and it will be very easy for foreigners to repatriate there. Whether Thank you so, so much, Mr. Jubela. Maguta Kuona is the uh, chair, chairman of the Association of Investment Managers. Um, you've heard some of the issues that have been uh, talked about here. I'd be very keen to hear, uh, you know, your response to some of these issues and addressing you know, some of the concerns that we've heard coming through from, from the international investors. Okay, thank you very much. And thank you, Honorable Minister. I think as far as our constituents is concerned, we're obviously very excited that, uh, you know, we've got this idea of the VFX, which we think that is going to resolve the conundrum that we have been seeing uh, on the dual listed stocks on the ZSC. And it is our hope, Honorable Minister, that whatever EUs were there from the dual listed stocks are not going to be exported from the ZSC to the VFX. So, you know, um, then the, there's the issue of transaction costs, uh, the transaction friction that is caused by taxes and trading costs. Um, when, when you look at the current framework on the, on, on the ZSC, we think that uh, it is very expensive. 
it is extremely expensive to trade on the ZSC. And so when we are now looking at the VFX, we have to consider the issues of competitiveness. And obviously, the VFX now has to compete with other exchanges, even the, 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 the JSE on these dual listed uh, stocks. So it is our, our hope that, Honorable Minister, you are going to consider the issue of the uh, uh, um, taxation framework, particularly, you know, uh, capital gains tax. Uh, I know that we have already put in a paper uh, as an association uh, around um, the collective investment schemes with, with a view that, you know, you, you'll be able to actually streamline and make collective investment schemes pass through, you know, uh, uh, for purposes of tax. So, so it is our hope and an appeal we are making right now that through this vehicle of the VFEX, you will be able to actually review. Because our, our, our constituents intend to create, uh, you know, cross exchanges and, and cross currencies, uh, you know, uh, uh, products, you know, novel products, which are going to actually look at both exchanges, the, the, the Victoria Falls Stock Exchange and even the, the Zimbabwe Stock Exchange, uh, it, you know, in as far as creating, you know, investment products are concerned. So, so, so we, we would like for you, you know, Honorable Minister, to look at that. The issue of fungibility, I know that there has been partial fungibility that, 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 that was existing on the uh, uh, dual listed stocks. You know, it may be necessary to review that. I mean, if you look at liquidity, on, on, on the ZSC, uh, for the period of 2009 to about 2013, the ZSC was trading almost a million US dollars, you know, on, on a daily basis. So, you know, if, if you are going to have to reach those sort of levels, we have to look and deepen that market and allow, you know, full participation of various investors to come in. Uh, we are extremely excited about the issue of the mining sector that the minister has talked about. I mean, if you look at the ZSC, you know, the mining board of the ZSC is only 2.5% uh, of, of, of market cap. And yet mining sector contributes almost 10% to GDP. So, so to us, you know, we, we think that we are going now to be allowed <laughs> to end up those you know, mining companies that previously we were not able to actually access. Uh, thank you. Great. Uh, Honorable Minister, maybe you'd like to respond to some of those issues directly. Thank you very much. I, I just wanted the, the gentleman to say what his name is. I want to, I'm, I want to write it down. Jubela uh, Magutakuona. Ah, Magutakuona. Yes. Okay, thank you very much. It's a long one, Honorable Minister. Uh, yes, but I got it. Jubela Maguta Guwana. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, thank you very much for your contribution. I really appreciate the contribution, uh, uh, Jubela, because uh, it really uh, uh, gets to the cuts to the chase in terms of uh, how to create a competitive uh, uh, Pan African global platform. That is our intention. So we are going to watch those uh, uh, you know, uh, trading costs uh, and other exchanges, whether it's JSC or whatever, and make sure that we can compete. So I'll, I'll, I'm looking forward to receiving your paper uh, and also receiving some advice from uh, Bonnie and uh, uh, you know, the, the commission as well on how we can be, become even more competitive. But also I, I hope what it does for the stockbroking community in Zimbabwe and others uh, and custodian services is to give you another window for, for expansion in terms of your services that uh, I hope to see uh, more subsidiaries being created uh, by yourselves around the the uh, Victoria Falls uh, uh, stock exchange. Um, uh, yeah, so 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 this this we're going to do, and also uh, we are thinking that we could even issue part of the bond instrument for the compensation of uh, farmers um, uh, on the Victoria Falls stock exchange, so that uh, Zimbabweans as well who wish to have this as an investment instrument and why not, uh, given the opportunity to, to do so. so. So we see this uh, uh, exchange uh, giving us uh, quite a bit of opportunity uh, for, as Zimbabwe, as the government, to support certain things that, that we would like to, 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 to support. So, so, so yeah, so, so we will, uh, in the main, make sure that the, the market is, uh, uh, the VFX is competitive, we'll compete with, with other exchanges so that we can attract uh, businesses uh, from those exchanges. So I'm looking forward to those uh, <clears throat> proposals around taxation. I haven't received the paper yet, but I'm sure it's on the way. Uh, I'm looking forward to, to it and see what we can do in the next budget and subsequent budgets in terms of uh, <clears throat> amendments to the finance bill accordingly. Uh, thank you very much. Sorry, uh, sorry uh, if I can add on something, Minister, uh, in terms of yes. the midterm budget, uh, there will be no capital gains tax on, on the FX. 
So you already gave us that on the medium. Oh, 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 yes, yes. The, on VFX itself, as a, you know, there's, no, there's no capital gains tax. Yeah, thanks for reminding me. Very yes. important. <laughs> uh, thank you so much. Um, look, uh, obviously not being a, uh, very savvy in these issues and being an outsider just as a media person, I'm wondering, and I would like to put it to, to the panel, I mean, uh, these incentives and these you know, things that are being offered to VFX, are we going to see the same one day being extended to ZC itself to try and you know, prop it up? There have been a lot of, well, a number of delistings in, in recent times. Won't, what's on offer for the ZSC main for it to, to, to also be propped up and be shored up? Well, over time, we'll also give incentives to the ZSC, uh, 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 but not yet. For now, we want to promote VFX so that we can launch it successfully. We're trying to attract uh, foreign investment, much needed foreign investment into the country. We're trying to attract, to make sure that we create a, an international a platform. Uh, but of course, over time, we'll continue to give more incentives as well to the ZSC for the uh, more domestic listing uh, oriented companies. And, and, and trade it. Well, fantastic. Thank you so much. We are going to open up uh, the discussion to some of the people who are in this meeting. There are almost a hundred of us here, so I'm sure there are people with many questions out there. We'll take a few questions which, uh, which you can direct to any of the panelists. As I said, we've got the Honorable Minister, uh, we've got the CEO of the Zimbabwe Stock Exchange, we've got the Chairman of the Association of Investment Managers and also the Head of Research uh, for Sub-Saharan Africa at Renaissance Capital, Yvonne Mango, you heard her speak earlier. So um, I'll give this opportunity to some people if uh, I can see a couple of hands that are already up. We'll start with TN, we'll label this TN, please introduce yourself and go ahead. Good afternoon, Farai, thank you very much. My name is uh, Tari Rondevele. Um, I'm a board member on ZIDA. And my question is directed at the minister. Good afternoon, honorable minister. Good afternoon. I would like to find out what is our end game with the Victoria Falls Stock Exchange. I'm thinking, are we looking at a situation like uh, Jersey and Guernsey, where you then eventually have some supporting platforms and institutions besides just the stock exchange itself to support driving foreign currency coming into the country? Uh, actually, you, you, the way you have said it is exactly where we are headed. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Ndebele, for that uh, comment. I really appreciate it, which is we want eventually a Genzi out of all this. The stock exchange was the easy way in um, because we could literally create a, a, a legal fence around it and, and, and get on with it, and that's what we are doing. And, and then also exchange control fence around it and get on and, and do it. But we know that for, for a full bouquet of uh, services around a fully fledged financial services center, we need more than exchange. We need uh, uh, basically to be against it. We need, uh, you know, all the custodial services to be in place and other services. You've seen it in Gens and Mauritius. That is where we are headed. And that's what really would constitute uh, institutions that are operating under the offshore financial services center. So this is a start and, and, and more is a year yet to come uh, going forward. Thank, Thank you, Minister. And, and I've got a follow-up question to that, Farai, sorry about this. Now, okay, if that is the case, is, this, is there a provision for this expansion of all the other financial and enabling platforms in the Victoria Falls Master Plan? Because my background is also tourism, and I know that Victoria Falls has had a lot of plans that have come up in light of you know, uh, it being one of the top destinations in the world. And I'm just wondering, has this been also you know, you know, couched in the Victoria Falls master plan or it's something that we now have to put in place since we have instituted this stock exchange on there? That is my last question. Thank you very much, Minister. Oh, yes, okay. thank you, uh, Mr. Ndebele, once again. Very good question again. The issue of Victoria Falls Master Plan is hot at the moment. We as government, we are really training our attention on it. And, and the plan has already been uh, uh, presented, uh, which is not just Victoria Falls, but it also covers Wange and the Binga area. There's uh, several nodes for development in that whole, pre let me call it a precinct or region. And Victoria Falls is at the center, center of it. So in the master plan for Victoria Falls, it's all uh, in there, including a part of the land that uh, 
borders the Wange area. Uh, um, the name just escapes me. Uh, 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 you know, um, but uh, being someone who's at Zida, uh, uh, your, your, your executives and management will know quite a bit. Uh, I've seen the draft of the plan. It's been presented to me. It's been presented to cabinet, and uh, and they, they, it's all in the plan. If perhaps we feel we need uh, more space is needed or more precise planning is needed, it will be done because we've said that uh, uh, Victoria Falls should be a financial hub uh, in terms of an offshore financial center but also a significant tourism hub uh, and, and yeah, the entertainment hub. So it, it's in the, all in the plan. Thank you. Thank you so much, Minister. Let me now call upon uh, Clive Pambela. Uh, I know you've got your hand up to make a contribution or, or comment. And after that, we'll hear from Scott McMillan, but uh, Clive, please go ahead. Thank you. Uh, my first comment was really to alert the minister that uh, he's got a strong team of uh, senior staff from the ministry that have joined the meeting. There's myself, there's Mrs. Efudzi, and others. So, so we can uh, assist uh, the minister uh, if he so pleases uh, in addressing some of the issues. Um, but certainly I think- Oh, 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 oh Clive, that's, that's great because I'm about to rush to parliament. So oh, okay. Two minutes to go. <laughs> I, think, I think you knew that. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'll leave it. Uh, uh, I'll be here for another five minutes. Then you, you and my foods and others uh, uh, take over the the Q and A. Thank you. No, that, that's fine, Minister. That that's absolutely fine. I think um, um, the previous speaker did speak to the the actual strategy that we are following, um, establishing a complete financial service centre that will drive. Um, you know, an, an offshore investment platform uh, for the whole country and, and the region. And um, we want to make it a global platform. Okay. Thank you so much for that, Clive. Uh, Scott McMillan, uh, you've got your hand up as well. Please go ahead, sir. I uh, guess good afternoon and uh, thanks to Tamara for, for hosting this event. It's, uh, it has been very informative. Uh, this question is um, is probably directed more at uh, the Honourable Minister or uh, or Justin Bongi. Uh, <clears throat> when do you expect to have the exchange up and running, and uh, and what are the listing requirements going to be? Um, we're, we're looking at this. Um, I'm the uh, the managing director of Invictus Energy, by the way. Um, we're looking at this as a potential secondary listing. I think it's a fantastic initiative, and it's got the potential to really inject a lot of confidence, particularly for foreign investors, uh, back into and, and generate interest in, in investing in Zimbabwe, again, particularly in the resources sector. Oh, wonderful to hear your voice. Is the minister here speaking? I was up in Mzaraban two weeks ago, and I saw the site and the pegging of where you'll be, uh, or rather around the, the area where you'll be drilling and so forth. So. Uh, welcome on board and uh, looking forward to, to you making progress over there. Um, certainly, you are, you are all welcome to, to more than welcome to list uh, on the VFX on the Stock Exchange. And I think let me hand over to Bonnie in terms of timing. I know that he's going through certain processes, including the exchange control uh, issues. Uh, but in terms of listing requirements, uh, uh, I get a sense that those are almost they are in place already. But I, I hand over to Bonnie. Thank you very much. Okay. So the first one is easier in terms of the listing requirements that has been completed. Uh, so Scott, if you want, I can send them to you uh, separately. Uh, they will be available. They are available on our website uh, on ZDC. But if you want, I can send those separately to you. Then in terms of per the perhaps what we could do, Bonnie, is oh, sorry for interjecting. I apologize. Also, I'm trying to rush to Parliament, trying to say as much as possible. Is that let's just circulate the the uh, listing requirements to everyone who is online. Okay, you know, if all there's right. a way, just do it like that. We just cover everyone. Uh, sorry for that. Thank you. Uh, okay, that, that, that's fine. Then in terms of the launch itself, uh, we are now on the final phase of, uh, so we are doing the discussion with the Reserve Bank uh, to finalize the clearing and settlement. Uh, we are fine tuning our system. Uh, and then we are now working with the companies that are gonna initially list on the FX. So we, we are in the final phase. So a couple of weeks at most. Yeah, you, you want to give them an, a more exact time? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure the, chair, the, the people want to hear. 
I, I can't because whatever we do, we have to get our regulator approving us launching. So uh, I, 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 agree. I agree. If I do that, the regulator will say to me, who are you to say? But we are very close. So, talking about the regulator there, we have uh, Mr. Tavaz Wachinamo, who's also part of, not a panelist, but I think since, uh, you know, these issues have been raised, it would be great to hear him uh, and also maybe speak to some of the steps that are being taken. Tavaz Wachinamo. I'm just trying to locate him so he can unmute his, uh, his mic. His, uh, mic. Oh my God, uh, thanks. I wasn't expecting to say anything. I was really enjoying the, the, the discussion. Uh, but I think a lot of it has yeah, it's really been said. It's been a journey. And um, I think where we are right now, I think you did, the board of the commission approved the application of the exchange. As, and I, I guess for it to then operate, uh, we are just satisfying ourselves that the systems, especially the settlement uh, part of it, is agreed by all. I think that's really, for me, is the main step. The listing rules, rules like Justin said, uh, those ones we didn't have an issue with. We, uh, we approved those. And then maybe just to point out to the minister that on the uh, transaction costs that were raised, I think it was by um, Jubela, um, there has been representation consistently without fail every single year for as long as I can remember to for the government to look into reducing the transaction costs on our exchanges. Uh, but again, okay, like you requested, we can resubmit those, but certainly it's something that uh, we want to, I mean, we were excited as well as a commission that we've got another exchange offering something different. Uh, speaking again, from a holistic point of view, this will be the third exchange that we have. I think the market, FinSec being the second one. So it's things that we encourage that we promote and we certainly hope that uh, we, as regulators, as government, we, can, we do all we can to assist and support the success of uh, such initiatives. But certainly, I think um, so far, they've checked all the boxes that uh, we put before them. And uh, I'm hoping that what's, whatever is left is minor enough for things to, to not stop anything to their opening. Thank you. Uh, great. Uh, I just want to bring uh, Yvonne back into the discussion here because I think obviously a lot of the stakeholders and key players in this are, are talking about progress and, and, and enthusiasm and excitement. But just to ask you uh, what might be, a, uh, you know, maybe not to dampen the mood, but just to ask you, Yvonne, do you think these FX exchanges work in Africa? Um, I think they could potentially will. But if you're asking me... Um, if there's any downside risk, we, it's, it's, I'm an economist. So I'll speak about the economic environment. Um, as, some, as someone uh, rightly mentioned, exchanges are competing, not just based on transaction costs, but also on the macro environment. So I think the outlook, the economic outlook is particularly important as well. Um, so once the exchange is up and running and indeed affects liquidity is something that's addressed, uh, what you find investors seeking to find out is what the growth potential of the respective economy is like. Um, and so I think the economic outlook is also particularly important. As we know, given the COVID pandemic, um, the Zimbabwean economy, like several economies around the world, is projected to contract this year. So many will be looking to see how it comes through this crisis, as that has implications for uh, companies operating in Zimbabwe and particularly those that are listed on the exchange. Uh Thank you so much for that. Um, Honorable Minister, I know you want to go shortly, but there are two questions that are coming up that I'd like you to just take very quickly, then we, we can free you up. I'll start with Tinashe and Yamunda. And, and uh, Tinashe and Ray, you're, you're asking the questions. If you could make them as brief as possible uh, so we can free up the minister. All right. Thank you very much, Farai. Um, well, like Farai said, my name is Tinashe Yamunda, and I'm an economic historian based at uh, Northwest University in South Africa. But I have a few questions for the minister that I would hope he can clarify for me. And they have to do with the capacity of the VFX to take off. The first one being the question of um, perceived economic instability outside the country. Um, it's all across the media, the interventions that South Africa is trying to make in whether it's a crisis or no crisis in Zimbabwe that everybody's talking about. Uh, that draws a certain picture about the investment climate in Zimbabwe. The other thing has to do with the cost of doing business in Zimbabwe. 
and all of these are issues that people have not really um, discussed in terms of what the Victoria Falls Stock Exchange does differently from what the ZSC already does. The final thing has to do with all the other initiatives to attract foreign investment. The Honorable Minister has traveled to Davos and to other international destinations to try and attract investment. But with the current currency situation in Zimbabwe, where policy appears to be inconsistent, you know, at one point you have US dollars being used, at another point we shift to using bond currency, and at another point we're not really sure what is going on there. Um, that kind of environment is something that investors also look at, whatever we mean by investment, in, investors in this particular context. What can the minister tell us? How will he confront all of these kinds of challenges in making sure that VFX becomes successful and it takes off? In the interest of time, thank you, Tinashe. Okay, in the interest of time, if I could just uh, get the other question and then. Uh, yes, please. Uh, I'm on pressure now for time. Right? Um, good, good afternoon, Minister Range over here from Bloomberg. Um, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yes, um, just a quick question. Just want to find out, it was mentioned earlier that uh, the second phase of VFX is going to search out for an investment bank or equity partners. And I'd like to find out, have any discussions uh, kicked off? And if so, who are you speaking to? Thank you very much. Uh, th thank you. Uh, let me start with uh, Raymond Lovus, which is easier. Yes, we have been talking to some potential investors and partners, but we can't say at this stage who they are. And I think Bonnie will agree with me. Yes, um, and we can't disclose them. We, but we, they, there is a lot of interest. We, were, if it, we have been surprised. I remember uh, Bonnie and I were sitting uh, uh, at midnight talking to one investor uh, who was in a different time zone. Uh, uh, you know, uh, we were on Zoom trying to see how they could uh, come on board. But uh, so the interest has been incredible. Uh, and I think then that, that's a nice segue into what Tinashe is, is talking about, which is we have found that actually the launch of VFX is part of the solution, part of the panacea for dealing with the environment for doing business. We are trying to basically remove the exchange rate risk from uh, our portfolio investment and also from uh, uh, FDI investment, but around the broader uh, financial services center concept. So it's actually a solution rather than a problem. So, so that, that's how we're trying to, to deal with the environment for doing business. But that's not all. Uh, Zida, and I'm glad that the board member for Zida, uh, Ms. Dube, sorry, Ms. Ndebele is, is online and she, she could add, Zida is, is going to be doing a lot in terms of uh, driving investment both domestically and interna in, internationally. Uh, in terms of the environment for doing business, uh, I must remind you that Zimbabwe improved 20 places globally uh, in the last two years in terms of global rankings. We're in the top 20 uh, global reformers in terms of uh, the environment for doing business. We've identified 16 areas as the government that we are pursuing uh, over the next two years. We want to make sure that we improve our rankings in terms of the environment and, and cost of, 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 of doing a, a, a business. Now, you, you mentioned about policy, policy inconsistency. We have never had any policy inconsistency. All we're doing is reforms. When you reform something, you change it. You might even change it again. It's called reform. So it's not policy inconsistency. If I can work hard to disabuse you of that uh, a, a notion that there is policy inconsistency. The, the Zimbabwe dollar is stable right now because of policy consistency. We've had policy consistency on the fiscal front uh, in the form of uh, consistently uh, uh, you know, uh, implementing fiscal consolidation. And, and also on the monetary front, making sure that money supply doesn't run away. The growth in M0 money has been stable and that's important. We've also been very consistent in our message that we would want to make sure that uh, government finances don't run away and we stop using the central bank overdraft window. We've, very, we've been very consistent about, on, on, on that. Now, now if you, perhaps you have, this pertains to the exchange rate and so forth, that all we've been doing is basically making sure that we walk the, the path of a full exchange rate reforms, a creating of, creation of a monetary policy committee. In fact, what we've done in the last two years is remarkable, in fact. We've actually launched a new currency from scratch. 
without international support, uh, uh, without uh, the normal balance of payment support that you see other countries receive. We've done that uh, on our own, and, uh, and uh, it's remarkable indeed. Uh, monetary policy committee helps us manage uh, that. So it's not policy inconsistency, it's actually reforms, and the reforms have been very successful. If I look at what we've done in terms of the TSP, the Transitional Stabilization Program, we've ticked every box in there. So the only thing left was currency stability. And, um, and we finally achieved that, but we've uh, achieved a lot. In, in fact, on the institutional front, the repeal of POSA, uh, the repeal of, PI, of IPA, all of those are part of the fabric of e economic reforms. The way we've gone about implementing the devolution agenda, uh, which is a quest for inclusive development. We've made a, a lot of pro progress on that. So I, I, I think that, I, I, please, if I can disabuse you of getting onto the bandwagon of the use of the, the misuse of the phrase policy inconsistency is reforms. And I'll be very happy for my team. In fact, I'll ask the Clive and Pambela Maizifuzi to send you a copy of a report that we've just prepared, which shows the progress we've made so far in terms of our policy reform agenda. I thank you. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Honourable Minister. Um, I can see another hand up. Um, uh, th thank you. I have to exit now. I have to rush to Parliament. If you can, you can forgive me. I think I'd like to thank you for okay. listening to me. Uh, okay. I have to excuse myself. I've got uh, my team, uh, the Foods and Clive Pamela and others online. I'm sure they'll be happy to, to assist with some of the Q&A. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, you so much, Honorable Minister, for your time. Uh, Mr. Arun, uh, yes, I yes, Farai. I was about. just going to add on to what the Minister okay, has ahead, said in, in response to Tinashe. Uh, the ease of doing business ranking, which the Minister has highlighted, that was one of the points I was going to raise as um, an indication of that yeah, we are moving up the ladder. It is a slow, you know, turning of the wheel, but the wheel is definitely turning in the right direction. And then the second thing that Zida is working on, obviously, is benchmarking with the best in the class. I mean, we all know the story of Rwanda and how they have turned from a situation which I imagine was worse than ours in terms of, you know, how the world was perceiving uh, the Rwandese environment after the genocide in 1994. And we're talking only 26 odd years ago, and yet today, they're one of the, you know, the bright stories of Africa, the stars of Africa. So our case is not too dissimilar and we can get there. And it's a pro process of finding who's the best in the class and then picking up the best practices. And that's what Zida is actually started to work on. And then third and finally, obviously our PR has not been the greatest. We have not been telling our story of all the successes that we've made, the reforms that the minister alluded to, a lot of those have been very received very positively, you know, by investors, not just within the country, but also outside the country because they've addressed key issues that were really a stumbling block for a number of investors. So it is work in progress and we will get there. But it, you know, Rome was not built in a day. And uh, I'm sure by the time we're over with this, Tinasha will be very happy with the results. Thank you, Farai. Fantastic, thank you so much for that. Um, I've got a question and, and, and Clive, as you come in, uh, Clive and Pamela, as you come in to, to uh, pick up some of these, a question I, I'd like to direct to you. It's coming uh, from someone who sent it to me privately saying, um, will secondary listings on VFX not create implied rates? Now, as you answer that as well, uh, Clive, if you don't mind, I've also gotten several people asking for, uh, asking you to send them the report that the minister alluded to. Uh, so perhaps to make life easier, if, if you don't mind, you could also maybe share your email address so that those who want that information can also get in touch with you and ask for it. But uh, over to you, Clive, uh, that, makes it, that question, won't the secondary listings create implied rates? Thank you. Th thank you, Farai. Certainly, I think uh, just, Justin Buoni did answer this question earlier on. Maybe colleagues missed it. Um, the... For companies that are already on the ZSC, there are two key um, points that uh, investors need to note. Uh, one, uh, there's a restriction on the amount of the equity that can be transferred 
or put on VFEX, and that is that cap is 20%. The second imposition that we've put there is that 20% must represent new capital. So there will be no transfer of shares from a ZSC register to a VFEX register. And the third thing is um, the, the, the share capital on VFEX must be of a different class in terms of instrument um, so that you know they, there is no one-to-one -one relationship or any discernible relationship. So to, to, to completely um, uh, we, uh, remove the possibility of creating uh, you know, implied rates. But also colleagues, let's also uh, uh, realize that the, the, the problem of implied rates was also a short-term phenomenon. I think as the currency stabilizes going into the future, you know, that problem's uh, um, uh, visibility will become less and less. And then uh, I hope that answers uh, uh, the question. The, yeah, the, the second, uh, the, my intervention was just an addition on the cost of doing business. I think as we launch VFX, the minister has been very clear that the tax regime around um, the operations of VFX itself and the, and the participants on VFX will be very favorable. And the minister is already committed himself uh, to say that as Treasury, we are prepared to even bend further backwards to make VFX one of the most competitive exchanges, at least from a fiscal and tax perspective, that is within our ambit and mandate to, to be able to do so. So Justin and his team are in a good space. We will support them. We will give tax incentives, uh, both for the exchange and for the participants on the exchange so that we, we make it a success. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Clive, for that. Uh, as I said, the, the, the requests for that report in terms of the achievements and reforms that uh, the minister mentioned, uh, the requests keep coming through. And uh, I understand that it is possible to upload that report on this chat. So I'm not sure if you would be in a position to do so at this point in time, Clive. Um, I'm told that there is a way you can do it. If not, then, like I said, maybe you can share your details so people can get in touch with you directly for that because there have been quite a few requests for that and good news is always good to share isn't it what i'll do is i'll, I'll share it uh, with the organizers uh, and then they'll distribute i think it's easier right, fantastic so, so there are people who've been sending their email addresses on the chats please do so and those who'd like to receive that report please send them on the chat and we'll as when we get that report we'll send it out to all your emails. So thank you to all the people who've been getting in touch with your email addresses. We'll send you that report as soon as you get it. And those who'd li also like to get it, uh, please do so. Uh, I see another hand up from uh, Tinashe Nyamunda. Maybe you can quickly uh, pose a question as well, if you'd like to, and then. Yes, uh, thanks. It's a follow up question, really. And I appreciate the minister, you know, uh, trying to address the issue that I raised. But, um, you know, there have been suggestions from a number of observers that some of the reforms that have taken place, and I'm using the term reform here, have basically amounted to tinkering around the edges. And yes, this is a good initiative. Um, anything that might lead to the reform of the economy is always welcome. But I think to have a constructive discussion or, you know, to have a constructive dialogue about these kinds of issues, certain difficult questions still need to be asked. And one of these questions have to do with the idea of the um, economic environment in Zimbabwe. We must accept that it's unstable. Now, if we're talking about stability or the stabilization of the local currency, whatever it is, we have to consider um, the environment in which the local currency is operating. So for one, the reason, one of the reasons why I and this is what I'm going to suggest, why I think the economy appears stable at the moment is particularly because um, of the illiquidity in the economy. Up to now, people still can't get money from ATMs and from the banks and so forth. And I don't think that's a normal operating environment. That's one. Secondly, um, many of our civil servants are operating on very 
little wages in a context whereby we are asking people to invest in foreign currency and in a context where the hospitals are not working properly because nurses and doctors are not being remunerated um, you know, at a level that they should be. Who is to say that once we start improving their salaries and increasing them to a certain level, it's not going to uh, add inflationary pressures into the economy, leading to a situation whereby that instability comes back in again. So these Thank are the so much. Uh, questions that I... Nash, unfortunately, because of time, I, I need to stop you there because we're almost no, running out of uh, allotted time for, right. this, uh, for this discussion. So um, it's all right. if I could just uh, perhaps hand over to a couple of people to respond to those, but thank you so much for that. Uh, and I think very right. uh, pertinent issues that you raise. Uh, Mr. Boni, mm -hmm. I'd like you to maybe just come back to respond to what you can in terms of what we've just heard, but I think also just to uh, sum up... Uh, on some of the key issues and key questions that have arisen from, from this discussion. Okay, so we know that the key issue that we have to get right, which people will be looking at, is the clearing and settlement framework and how it's going to operate in practice. So we know that's what we're putting a lot of effort in uh, to make sure that uh, people can come in and go out easily, uh, that local people can invest on that exchange. So we're going to put a lot of effort in that. And we'll be monitoring very closely. And, we're gonna, and I'm very glad to say that the Reserve Bank has been very uh, helpful to us on this. And it's going to be an ongoing effort with them. Uh, we actually have agreed to have a committee together, uh, constantly looking to make sure that the clearing and settlement on VFX uh, works. And as we get more stable, we expect um, the clearing settlement to move from, uh, from the Reserve Bank to another party. Uh, especially that's why we're looking for an equity partner on VFX. Uh, we're looking for a partner who can help us very much on the clearing and settlement. So the clearing and settlement is one of the key things that we'll be uh, lo looking at. Then in terms of, I know people uh, talk about uh, policy inconsistency and all the other things. I can safely say that this uh, project uh, is one of that has been uh, very important to the government. Uh, we have seen it in terms of the support that they've given us and uh, we're hopeful that this will continue uh, to be an important project uh, to the government. Thank you, Mr. Boni. Uh, Yvonne, I know these are some of the issues, that, the concerns that you said uh, were in the minds of investors. Uh, it'll be very difficult, I suppose, if, if I was to ask you if what you've been hearing here gives you some concern, it gives you some comfort, but certainly um, comfort in the fact that the people behind this are aware of what the concerns are and are committed to, to addressing them. Um, thanks for that. One of the reasons when Aces Capital um, uh, uh, participated in this call is to express exactly, as you mentioned, investors' concerns, because they do uh, want a functioning stock exchange that they can participate in. But it's also highly important for them that they're able to repatriate um, their money. Uh, what's encouraging from the speaker that, that spoke uh, just before you from the ministry is that, uh, from what they've said, there seems to be a lot of uh, political will behind this and support of the central bank. And I'm hoping that this focus, the effort, and this political will uh, will result in it functioning as described by the ministry. So um, there seems to be lots of potential, and yes, we're waiting to see what the outcome will be. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Um, uh, if I could maybe hand over to Jubela as well, uh, just some, for, for some parting remarks, but I'd like to end with uh, someone from the ministry, I suppose, to uh, give us the final word. But Jubela, over to you. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, one issue that uh, may have been discussed, but uh, lightly so far, the issue of uh, uh, minorities and minority participation, uh, which, you know, Justin talks about a settlement platform that will be managed through the Reserve Bank. It is our hope that uh, such a platform will allow the local uh, minorities to participate across the two exchanges uh, 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 and obviously accommodate us because it, it would be very sad if we are excluded you know from uh, this new baby so uh, i think we've got the assurances that that has been communicated here uh, that you know uh, this exchange is going to be all inclusive uh, thank you thank you so much uh, uh, I don't know if Clive, you will be doing the honors just to give us uh, the last words since we began with, with the minister as well to wrap it up. 
Thank you. Thank, thank you, Farai. I think um, um, most of what you know can really be said has already been said. I think I can only emphasize uh, government's total commitment, uh, not just to the economic reform process, as the minister outlined, but you know, to a, to a, to a, to a, a, a commitment to deepening and broadening uh, Zimbabwe's uh, financial and capital markets. And this is just one of the steps um, that we are taking um, that is going to lead uh, to, to that process. So rest assured that, uh, you know, we, 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 we're giving um, our full support and weight uh, to this process. And um, Yvonne, please uh, continue to to talk to investors um, and really uh, collect the issues uh, and, and, and bring them to us because we we certainly want uh, this project to 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 be successful. Uh, just to point out that you know um, there is a market mechanism now for for investors to to actually exit through the auction, even for existing portfolio investors on the ZSC. There has been uh, a consistent allocation for capital transfers since auction number one. I don't know if you are aware of that, but many of the portfolio investors, 